Hello everybody. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Lisa and I'm the Mummy Whisperer and I help to support you mums to help you to feel happier and healthier and wealthier. And obviously today is um, everybody's really worried. Everybody's really worried, understandably, about coronavirus. And um, so if you work for yourself or if you have a business or actually if you're working for somebody else's business and you're worried about your own job, then obviously, you know, there are some concerns. So I wanted to come in. I, I had a real think this morning and I've got 10 really, really good tips to help you out with this because um, um, I because I really understand. The first thing I just want you to to know is that although this is really really worrying don't panic well do I'm not telling you to pretend like it's all right go and talk to a friend worry um cry get it all out right and and then let's make a plan and that's what that's what these 10 tips are all about so if you tip number one if you're employing staff you want to now, if you haven't done it already, now make sure that you have made some a training program with strict hygiene policies and procedures and you implement it straight away and you have a clear disciplinary connection to it. All right. So um, obviously we all know sneeze into your elbow, wash your hands for two lots of happy birthdays and... Um, but also it's about cleaning, you know, that it has to be really thought through. Like, for instance, if you were running a salon, as I did before, then, you know, the cleaning has to be really, really good. The washing of the cups and so on has to be really, really good. I think some trainers, some training companies are actually offering um, hygiene courses, which would give you like a, a, a certificate. Um, so that's step one. Then what you need to do, but even if it wasn't a salon, even if what you're doing is selling products and people are buying them across the internet, then people want to know that what they're getting hasn't been coughed on, right? And they want they want to know that you've thought about this, yeah? Or um, if you're running, if you've got a little home massage business or coaching business, people want to know that you've thought about this and that you're putting in some extra plans of actions you know so for instance I mean I offer one-to-ones across the internet but for some of my clients where I would normally work with them face to face we are switching to um, an online situation even if I'm literally even if they're literally living five minutes away from me right so it's about you sitting down and thinking about that we're coming together as a community I know that there's this concept of isolation but actually this is about us coming together as a community so you you decide what your social your hygiene make sure you've really really thought that through I mean literally you're thinking through a client walking through your business or receiving your package in the post and how that works you know I, have you really thought through the hygiene the second thing is you need to make sure your customers or clients know that you've thought about this hygiene and that you have got these policies and procedures and disciplinary, if you're employing people, clear disciplinary, that you have got those and that you've put them in place. So you need to make sure you let them know by newsletter and social media, every single social media option you need to make sure you let them know and as things change you need to update that and let them know that you've heard the change and you've adapted because obviously things are adapting so you want to let them know for instance you know if they're going to rely on you for appointments or for work what are you going to do about staff sickness what are your plans basically they want to know that if your if your staff if they're going to meet your staff one-on-one -on -one and your staff have a cold they want to know that you're not going to let staff come in you know um, they want to know what hygiene you've put into place. They want to know that you have got strict rules about staff following hygiene. Anyone who's employed staff know that they don't always do what you ask them to do so that you've put in some strict procedures. They want to know what are you going to do about delivery delays? You know, if what you are offering is an online shop, then they want to know, okay, are you still going to be reliable? 
you know so i had for instance i had an email off of avocado we're not going to be as reliable as normal you're going to need to order in a few days in advance that sort of thing that is actually really really sensible um, they might want to know, so you may have cancellation policies. They might want to know, well, what, what do I do if I feel a bit sick? If you're running um, a salon, for instance, then you want to say to them, it's okay, we normally have a clear cancellation policy, but if you're feeling ill in any way, shape or form, please don't come in, right? I had people coming in whilst they had vomiting bugs. You might actually want to tell them, please don't come in, <laughs> right? <laughs> When it comes to salons, people will come and get their head on whatever. It's crazy. Um, so, yes, yeah, so make sure you've got your clear policies. Make sure you let them know what you're doing. If I still had a salon, I would now have a huge sign in the window saying, my staff have been fully trained. They will not come in if sick. We are taking this really, really seriously. Yeah, that's what I would want to know 100%. If I'm ordering something online, um, I'm either going to have to clean it like anything or I want to know that it is. You see, because for some people, this is quite serious. For some people, you're really lucky and your family has good health and so on. But what happens is, uh, if in my case, there is an underlying health condition or one of the children has an underlying health condition or you've got a, a member of family, as we have as well, who's in a difficult situation. So, you know, bear in mind, you don't know what's going on in people's lives. Now, third point, if you run a business and you're considering traveling, reconsider. If you meet people face to face, and you're running a business and you're considering traveling, reconsider. Uh, because personally, right this minute, if I was going to go and have my eyebrows done or have a massage, I would not go to somebody who was um, just about to travel. I wouldn't. I wouldn't when, when they came back anyway. I wouldn't. So reconsider that. And if you are doing that, and I would also check your staff. You know, that's another thing that you can say to your clients I would go to all my staff and say what are your travel plans and if they were going to meet clients one-on-one -on -one, I would inform the clients you know and be really transparent about it all or if hopefully none of your staff are going then I would inform the clients of that that they're safe and sound and, and so on um now next thing really really practical I am not into fear-based worries or anything like that but a hundred percent sit down this weekend, look at your cash flow, look at your budget and cut stuff. Um, if you're in the UK, then it sounds like there's going to be some good support uh, rates and um, potential loans and so on. However, we don't know whether um, rent is going to be dropped. Um, certainly mortgage companies are already talking about, about supporting and so on. Um, but let's be sensible. I would look at your cash flow, I would look at your budget and I would cut what's unnecessary. If your business is the kind of thing that would be cut, then I would immediately and proactively contact your customers and offer them some kind of reason to not cut you. I would offer them um, some added value. Um, so if I was selling, yeah, so for instance, if I was selling... Um, a beautiful crystal bracelet then I would add in something extra um, you know like some aromatherapy oil um, if I was for instance if I was selling one of my coaching programs I would maybe add in an ebook I would maybe do a discount um, something like that yeah give them a reason to not cut give them a reason for it to be worth still sticking with you that there's still value in them spending that money point four the problem with running a small business is there's hardly ever that much space for mistakes. Yeah. So, for instance, if your business um, was actually only making a 10 percent or 20 percent profit, then the next three to four months is going to be really, really tricky. So you have got to be honest with yourself. You have to got to sit down and look at your business from top to toe and see what are the weaknesses where are you making mistakes where are you ordering stock when you shouldn't be where are you letting staff get away with things that they shouldn't do if you're if you're working on your own where is your um time not being spent well where are things not really really clear that you're doing what 
take this challenge as an opportunity to really fine tune your strategy, really fine tune your cash flow, really, really tighten things up, make your business more resilient and stronger and more flexible and more adaptable. Yeah, use this as an opportunity. So any mistakes or any issues, no more excuses. You're going to have to tackle them. Right. Otherwise, yes, unfortunately, some businesses aren't going to survive. So be determined, tackle them, um, ask for help. Right. I'm really hoping that what we're going to see is people coming together as a community to help each other, to support each other. So businesses that are struggling, talk to each other, swap ideas, be, you know, it, this is not about there not being enough out there. This is about it's all coming together. So. Oh, hey, Sarah. Um, France is a few days ahead. Yeah, working mums are struggling with balance and kids at home and work. Yes, absolutely. And funnily enough, Sarah, I've just recorded a podcast all about support. So that's coming out tomorrow about the mums that aren't supporting each other. And, and Sarah's absolutely right. If you're not getting enough support, then this challenge is going to be a real problem. So getting enough support is really key. So I really recommend that you check out my podcast tomorrow. It will be published tomorrow. It's all about um, working out if you are getting enough support. Being honest with yourself if you're getting enough support. Where could it come from as well? Um, right, where are my mistakes? Point six, collaborate. Swap staff. What can we do? You know, if collaborate with other businesses. You know, that are in a similar vein of things. What what could you do? Could you, if you're a massage therapist, could you collaborate with a physio and an osteo? How could you all work together? If you're um, if you're running a salon or something like that, can you connect up with the other salons? Are there going to be times when, you know, they're shut because they've got people sick? Could you help them and vice versa? How could you collaborate? Um, different businesses that are similar to yourself maybe you can actually come together instead of working separately um, and that brings me to point seven if you're self-employed and you're worried because your books were already not that full and now you're looking and thinking goodness me I could actually lose work well maybe not maybe what you actually need to do is go and approach those bigger companies, the ones that employ people, go and approach them and say, if you have somebody off sick, I can step in and help you. Yeah, so if you were doing marketing, then you could offer that. If you're doing hair or beauty, then you could certainly approach all the local salons because they'll be more keen on, on letting their staff go off sick, but keeping their customers happy. It's about them you know, showing that they're trying to do everything. Um, if you are, um, you know, if you, if you're, um, really, if you're, I know an amazing seamstress, she could offer sell herself to, um, companies that are smaller and still have people saying, there's so many things, your skills, if you're a bookkeeper, contact your local accountants and say, you know, if you get somebody off sick for three weeks, I can step in and I can help you. Right. Um, and maybe that, maybe this is the way to go, you know? Next, right, if you are a face-to-face -face business, I totally understand. If it's you on your own, you could definitely end up um, not being able to work for two weeks. <clears throat> if your clients are sick and you're a one-on-one -on -one business, then you could definitely see a drop in clientele for a while. So what can you offer online? Now, online, all right, is not the easy option. Please don't jump. There are so many people selling how to create, especially for coaches, how to create your online course and all the rest of it. It is not an easy option. It is a proper strategy shift. Right? But can you offer more online? Maybe what this is saying to you is that you need to think about this, that you need to adjust your strategy, that you need to rethink. So um, could you, if you were a salon, could you post um, and sell your stuff online, your shampoos, your skincare products and so on. You could do your consultations online as well. Yeah? If you are a healer, what can you do online? I've, I've been working with some people recently and they've been very nervous of 
um, short healings um, or distance healings, but it's all very viable. Be adaptive, be adventurous. Yeah, what what could you do? Um, obviously, if you're a coach, you can do go online. You can do group courses. It can be very very affordable initially in a Facebook group, but you need to spend some time. You need to work out how Facebook works, and you need to make sure you keep it clean and tidy, just like you would a room. Yeah, this is not a quick fix. It's not easy going online. Um, it takes some strategy thinking. You know, oh, I mean, one woman, I've there's two women I know just starting up um, yoga classes, one for kids, one for um, therapeutics. And I was thinking about them last night and I was thinking, oh, my goodness, this is not the ideal time. But maybe online. Maybe that's the, actually the thing. Maybe that's the rethinking. You know, somebody with premises maybe actually it's a time to rethink those premises you know I know how tough that can be what else can you do you can actually offer something amazing for your clients you know you can offer uh, that they pay now for discounted vouchers that they use in a couple of months time you know that's another really really good option for people all of these options could actually work for you bringing some money in but also work for them. Um, I've just seen a little message popping up. I've, I'm sure I've had several today from takeaways. If you're in the food business, for goodness sake, you're going to have to first send that message about hygiene before you send out the message about the takeaways. But then absolutely there are going to be people who could do with some help. If you are, um, you know, if you're actually struggling for money and um, your business hasn't been going particularly well and you know for instance maybe you're in a cleaning business and you're worried that you're now going to suddenly lose because people aren't going to want you round or something like that then maybe there's something else that you could do maybe you could be offering to help people um, and be rewarded for it it is okay all right to be paid maybe there are old people who are not going to be able to get their head around online shopping and you could offer to do it for them for um, a five or a ten or, or something like that that's not a bad thing to offer it's not bad if you need to pay your your kids bills right and somebody else needs help and you've got the space because suddenly you've lost some business then it's okay maybe actually you know if you do have um, a cleaning company maybe what you can offer is a deep clean you know that you actually go in and you you strip it there's so many different ideas tricky at the moment because we don't know exactly where we're at obviously in the UK we're kind of waiting today to hear are they going to shut the schools or not and so on um but you know but there are loads and loads of things you can do um don't forget, I know we're talking about business and so on, but don't forget your personal life. Take very sensible precautions, right? And that's why my podcast coming out tomorrow is about supporting yourself. There's, there's nothing we can actually do to be to guarantee not getting sick or whatever, but you, we can be sensible. We can be sensible about where we go and what we do and who we mix with and getting enough sleep and drinking enough water. And you know, I'm a huge fan of CBD oil, which is, it's, it's like vitamin C, but just a bit, but just stronger, you know, take sensible precautions without panicking. You know, I've got more reason to take more precautions. So yes, I'm not going to supermarkets, but I'm not going to not go where am I not going to not go if I had to get something from a shop I'd still go and get it from a shop yeah I'm not going to freak out the final thing the final thing is if you're worried the panic is going to cloud your judgment right at the very worst having been through it myself I can tell you that if if you do lose everything if you do lose your business you don't lose the ability to have joy in your life. You don't lose the ability to have happiness in your life. And if you're very sensible and you look after yourself and you make sure you've got support, you won't lose yourself in that. So although, yes, it's crap, I understand. I understand it's crap. I understand you're worried. I understand you're worried about the health implications, the financial implications and the potential implications of losing your business. I absolutely get that. And I've been there and I can tell you that whilst it's crap you will be okay and you will still feel joy 
and you will still have your kids and you will, there will still be sunshine and there'll still be daisies and there'll still be support. Yeah, there'll still be stuff there. Uh, we're very lucky in the UK, you know, that we do have um, support, we do have food banks, we do have those sorts of things. I think it's really important that therefore we do come together, that we do keep our eye out for the people that we know are vulnerable, the older people and so on. And um, and that we just take a breath, you know. Remember, I offer the free healing on Mondays. Um, I'm thinking I might actually have to ramp that up over the next couple of weeks, maybe offer a bit more, you know, because I understand. Um, meditations, going for a walk. When, when you get yourself into real panic, you have to get out ahead of it. So you, maybe you need to distract yourself and switch off and watch a film. Maybe you need to, well, I was going to say go out dancing. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe just put some really loud music on with the kids, dance around for a couple of hours and just really distract yourself from it. That's what you're going to need to do to get out of that panic. And you're going to need to rest and process. Think about your worries. When you're feeling fear, the worst thing is sometimes you you just let the fear run you and you're not actually thinking that thinking through what's going to happen. So you sit down and you go, what's the worst thing that could happen? What's the worst thing that could happen? Or what's the worst thing that could happen? You know, the worst thing that I was worried about was I was worried about losing my house. But in actual fact, when I got down to the bottom of it, it wasn't that I was worried about being rehomed and therefore losing the pets. That's what I was most worried about and not being able to afford the children's after school clubs. That actually, when I pinned it down, it was just those things. Yeah, and actually the kids were much more adaptable than I'd ever imagined. And um and and actually when I really realised it about the pets, I realised that there would have been people I would have been able to call on for some assistance for a short period of time. So with your fears, really, really look at them. Um if for any of you this means a really huge shift and change in your work and stuff because it's drastic then I'm afraid to say it was necessary for some reason, just as it was for me. And I can tell you now, come in a year, you know, at the other side, it will be okay. For the rest of you, I think that actually you're going to find it's not that drastic. I think you're going to find it's a minor, minor tweak and it's going to be valid and it's going to be, like I said, tightening up the business, fine tuning it, making it more successful, making it more resilient, making it more flexible. And, um, and creating more support systems in your life. Yeah. So I just wanted you to know if you have any questions, I'm here. I'll answer them on my podcast or you can come into the Mummy Whisperer Tips and ask me in there. Um, and um, I had some ideas as to what I could do. Obviously, I do do the free healing on Mondays. Um, I'm just finishing up the 21 day free money booster. It's worth you coming in to do that. So you come in to Mummy Whisperer Tips. Um, everything's in there in the units and you can download the free ebook from my website. And anybody who's got it, I'm sending something slightly different from next week. Actually, I'm sending you all like a free gift. Then the other thing I was thinking that maybe I could do is um, there's been a few people that have lost their jobs, Flybe and so on. So anybody who loses their job because of this whole, because of everything over the next two months, then I will just message me and I will send you my book, Time for Change, for free. Time for Change um, just helps you to think through what's going on in your life. You know, what would what could you do instead? It's just a really helpful eight day to eight week workbook to to get you thinking so if you if something like that happens just message me and I will send you that workbook um the other thing to remind you is you know taking care of yourself the on my website for sale is my sleep tips and toolkit workbook I really recommend that sleep is key it's got meditations it's got one minute wonders like hypnotherapy and stuff it's got loads of toolkits because loads of tips because I've had so many problems with sleep that's all in there. I really recommend that. Um, I run a business booster and I normally run it quarterly and I happen to have just finished it. So what I was thinking was I'm going to run a special one of them. I'll 
announced that I'm going to run a special coronavirus, one of them before the end of March. That will mean that we will specifically focus on how to make your business more resilient and how to help you um, survive. And I'm going to offer, I mean, it's only 19.99, but because people are worried, I'll pro- I'm going to offer a, a um, payment plan over two months for that. So um, if you if you want to be able to come and ask me in the business clinic and really go in depth into what you're, what's going on. And if you want to join in with that business booster, that is going to run again and I will let you know all about this and the other thing I was going to do is if you are panicking and you are really really worried don't forget to go through so if you're just joining don't forget to go through um, the recap and all those 10 tips that I've just suggested to you um, because all those those 10 tips should definitely get you going but if you need a bit more then um, what I was going to offer was I do um, focused business reviews so it's like an hour of focus on a particular problem you've got, whether it was social media or marketing or um, cash flow or strategy or, you know, something like that, very specific and focused. Um, they're normally 145 and I'm going to offer them out uh, 50% off. I can't do stuff for free. Obviously, I've got kids to feed as well. But um, 50% off, that's £72.50 for for a real focused review for somebody. If, you, if you're just so worried, you just don't know what to do. Come and... Um, chat to me on that and what I don't normally do is I don't normally offer one-off one-to-ones for any kind of health issues um but I am going to offer those and I'm going to offer the same 50% off okay so um hi Catherine Carol um Carolyn and Ali I see you've just joined don't forget to catch the recap for the 10 tips that I've put out for you there loads and loads of ideas for you and then a few things that hopefully I can actually directly support you with and I will keep coming back on here um, if I get more ideas and my podcast comes out tomorrow with you know making sure you're properly supporting yourself so that you are actually resilient enough for the next couple of months that's what we need that's what we need to be um anything else I need to tell you no, I don't think so. And it's time for me to go and get my daughter in a minute as well. Um, just wanted you to know, you know, like I said, look after yourself. Come together as a community. Ask if you need help. And I'll be there or I'll find you somebody who can help. All right. Take care of yourselves. See you soon. Bye.